Now, babies are really born whenever they truly want to be. Don't I know it? And sometimes it means a lot earlier than usual. And oftentimes this means some time spent in the neonatal intensive care unit or NICU for some extra love and care. And today we hear from the Hillebrand NICU at Prometica. Dr. Stein, what's that word? Ebide. Ebide, thank you. Prometica Ebide Children's Hospital, who show us how some people really do have the best job around. I always have been a baby person. I'm one of six children, the oldest female. So I've been around babies my whole life. I seem to be able to calm them when they're upset. And for me, it's very rewarding. And uh, some of them have uh, issues that you have to be careful with the IVs, the colostomy, different things, but you can still hold them and rock them and um, the babies just enjoy it. That human touch just fits in with what they need emotionally, physically, materially. Uh, they like that human touch. I spend time talking to them if they're awake. I had one last week and uh, it was kind of fussy until I picked it up and then they kind of opened their eyes and I told them what beautiful hair they had and I got the biggest smile and then they just went right back to sleep. So they like your voice. They like to be talked to. And of course, all women like to be told they're beautiful, so. <laughs> so we have about 30 volunteers who cuddle daily here at the hospital. They cuddle here in the NICU for when the parents or guardians or family members can't be here for their babies. And that way, in the absence of the, of the family members, um, volunteers can give that mental, physical, human touch. The nurses are terrific. They love the babies, they care for them meticulously, but they have several babies they're caring for, so they can't spend time cuddling and interacting on a different level. And that's what I have, I, myself, and all the other cuddlers have the opportunity to do. Uh, yes, the NICU, you love it, and then I'm not a massive fan of it, but however, at the end of the day, Dr. Howard Stein, you actually uh, were very integral in my NICU journey. Um, he's the director of the Hillebrand NICU at Prometica Ebide Children's Hospital, an amazing doctor, my favorite doctor. Of course, all of them were. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the importance of the neonatal intensive care unit, honestly. Well, as you started your segment by saying babies arrive when they do, um, our unit serves those babies who show up too early. Um, we see babies in our NICU as early as 22 weeks gestation, as small as about 12 ounces, and from there on out. Um, some of them are born with multiple other medical problems. Some of them are just born with prematurity. Fortunately, many of them do fantastically. Um, all we are doing is really trying to create a safe place for them to grow and do all the things they should have done inside mom until they are now mature enough to do it all on their own. So we're providing them with support for their breathing, we're providing them with support for their temperature, helping them with feeding, um, and then helping them transitioning through different types of fetal to newborn problems. Um, and as I said, most of them do fantastically. It just takes time for them to get through it. And as I often say to parents, your baby's not necessarily sick, they just undercooked, <laughs> and they have to go through the same process on the outside as they were doing on the inside. So technically speaking, if I am, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and just do, uh, I am the oven, I pulled her out too early, so then we stick her back in a microwave in a sense, maybe? Well, <laughs> not, not quite a microwave, because a microwave's faster. That's true. So they go back in um, something that actually is a little bit slower. As good a job as we do, we're not as good as you. The uterus is the place to be, and if we could keep babies in, the longer we keep them in, the better they're gonna end up doing. Now, we were talking earlier about the fact of, you know, I was not thrilled. You know, my journey was an additional 89 days uh, that she had to go, and I was there every day. But it's great that we have these cuddlers. Now, why is it important? Because like you said, you guys are taking care of the health of the baby, but it's not just their physical well-being, but also their, um, you'd see, like, emotional or mental. Like, is, is the touch necessary? When babies are born early, their brains are very immature, and a lot of those neural pathways aren't developed yet. Mm -hmm. 
When they're supposed to grow in utero, they're surrounded by fluid, it's dark, it's quiet, it's warm. And all of a sudden, when they're on the outside, they're now lying on a blanket, there's noise, there's light. Their environment is very, very different from what it's supposed to be. So um, having these adjunct therapies where we help their developmental parts, there's little bits of infant massage, cuddlers who come in and hold the babies, um, talking to the babies, um, singing to them, talking to physical, um, working with physical therapists and occupational therapists, speech therapists, who I think you, you encountered all of them in your stay, who all help these babies' brain pathways develop as normally as they possibly can on the outside. Um, touch, smell, sound, light, all part of normal development. So we, we try and create as stimulating environment as we can, but in as gentle a way as we can to help these babies progress. Now I know your focus is on babies, uh, but when it comes to any moms that may be watching, because it took a long time for me not to feel like a failure as an oven, in a sense, uh, when it came to trying to just keep the baby in, keep her alive, we had to take her out. So. What do you tell parents in terms of just trying to feel better about the fact that, you know, now you're going to take over? Right. Well, you know, the, the reality is, other than in rare circumstances, this is not mom's fault. Your body is going to do what your body is going to do, and sometimes you're just unable to stay pregnant. Um, fortunately, we have everything available that we have to give you the, the opportunity for your baby to survive and do great. Um, we really work families a lot. We, we don't really talk to our patients. <laughs> so when we, when we do these sort of types of talks, it's always with the parents. Mm -hmm. um, every mom feels guilty. Every mom feels like she didn't do a, yep. you know, a good job <laughs> with it. And, and we really stress to them, as we did to you, yeah. you, you didn't do this. This wasn't your fault, it just happened. But now the work starts. Um, what we did in the NICU, is good. We, we love what we do. Mm -hmm. But after 89 days, we sent you home. <laughs> okay. So in the last how many months, 17 months it, since yeah. then, you've done all the work. Yeah, no, yeah. You've, you've done everything. <laughs> so what, what your daughter is today is really a little bit of us, but mostly the parents. And we really emphasize to the parents that though they feel they have little control in the NICU, they have immense control on the long-term outcome of their babies. Yes. So they are still the parents throughout the stay. Thank you. <laughs> it is important. And of course, you know, ProMedica uh, did a great job. And of course, they can continue to help. So of course, uh, Dr. Stein, one of many within uh, Ebide Children's Hospital. Uh, is there anything else you want to make sure folks know about the hospital before we send it to another story? Yes. Um, <laughs> this is not a one-person job. Mm -hmm. um, we are extremely fortunate to be surrounded by fantastic nurses outstanding respiratory therapists, the support staff from everyone who mixes up medications and formulas, to administration who gives us everything we need to do this right. Um, ProMedica really provides us with an amazing team to give you the amazing daughter that you have. Thank you.